six. Hello and welcome to The Far Away Nearby, a show about two nerds and an intellectual sharing experience and laughs along the way. This is episode six, and this week it is just Sue and I. Janet is out at a retreat, which she will report about later. Hello, Sue. How are you? Hi, DJ. How are you doing? I am just wonderful. I'm doing well. And I thought that we would start off by talking about your week. How did that go? Well, my week has been pretty good. Um, Physical therapy is going okay. And the only problem is that my arm hurts a lot. And I was to the doctor uh, Monday, I think, and he said that it's okay that the doctor that it it, just because the other one didn't hurt like this doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with this so i'm believing him but it hurts a lot and i it's really hard for me to believe that but physical therapy is going well so i have been trying to to make myself feel a little better and i've been watching uh ken burns the national parks uh america's best idea which it is, of course. I grew up next to the uh, Rocky Mountain National Park and the Colorado uh, and the Rocky Mountain National Forest, which has always made me wonder what the difference is because the two places look pretty much the same to me. You could drive off of one and you could drive into one and drive around and get out and walk around. And it looked pretty much like a place that had a lot of pine trees and other kinds of evergreens. And you could drive out, uh, out a ro- off of a road and drive right across the, the highway that goes to Estes and drive into the other. Whether you drove out of the forest, you could go into the park. Or if you drive out of the park, you could go into the forest. And it looked just exactly the same. So I never figured out what the difference between the two were, but apparently we have forests and we have parks. But they are beautiful, and the explanation and the, the, the photography and what have you that Ken Burns has done is just fantastic. So what would you say was the highlight of your week? Well, I think watching the Ken Burns project <laughs> Because the stuff with my recovery from my arm is not so good. But, uh, of course, then then this afternoon I was trying to clean out Artivo. It's got a lot of stuff on it. And so I was watching the uh, Independent Lens. And, of course, they frequently have a lot of really uh, downcast stuff. And so I was watching things about the Nazis and... and uh, the abortion, the, the pro, the anti-abortion people who are uh, who have tr- decided that they need to get involved in the in the shootings in, in like you know the m- multiple shootings that we have around the kids killing other kids and and things like that and also into the the police and the black um, and the uh, killing the black kids and and some adults. And that was really, um, that kind of put me down a little bit. But overall, I think I'm, I've had a really good week. I, I'll shake that. I'll shake the, the blues. I'll, I'll shake the independent lens off pretty soon because it's just, it, it, it's just the thing that that does. And I watch it as often as I can. And I just had several of them piled up and so I was watching I was watching that. That's one of my favorite things too is when I get to a day off and I've got time to go over the DVR and it's like oh these (laughs) things have collected up and it's like a little box of candies. This one's good this one's good. Oh well that one's kind of eh. (laughs) delete. I I always think that uh, I need to watch these things because I need information about if I am going to discuss vehemently with other people about my likes and dislikes and 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 my politics, I need to have information about not only my side, but also their side. Mm -hmm. So uh, I need to watch these things that make me unhappy. 
sometimes. Yeah, and I think that's, I was just going to say that's one of the things about the independent lens is that it does, they do cover a lot of things that are not my, my belief system, but it's good information. So how was your weekend, DJ? As far as my week, I would say that um, my high point, the, the peak of my week was, well, as I've mentioned a few times, we have uh, purchased an older home. So, of course, it's in a constant state of shuffle and sorting. We're remodeling. And it was just a little bit more than exciting to learn that one of the projects involved in that is going to be nearing an end soon. Ah, <laughs> yes. Um, we, uh, we have a Victorian-style home, Victorian Revival, if you want to be technical. But yeah. uh, the bathroom was just on the main floor. It was just, well, laid out stupidly. Uh, <laughs> I don't think in 1962 when the house was built – they devoted much time to thinking about, wouldn't it be nice to have a patio out back? I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that um, even the garage was an afterthought because it's not really connected to the house. It just happens to be situated next to it. You can't get to and from the garage into the kitchen. You have to go outside. But um, we decided to take the bathroom, which was in our uh, back hallway, and turn it it was very poorly designed in that it was set wide ways in the back hall and the hallway was wider than it needed to be so we just took the bathroom out and redesigned it so that it sat narrowly in that back hall and that gave us the opportunity to put through a new door into what will be a patio So I was excited to hear that because when you've been living in a house for three and a half years, you kind of get to the point where you're just thinking, this is where I live and it may not ever be done. (laughs) (laughs) So just be happy about the little things as they come along. That was the high point. Um, That leads into the low point in that Seeing those pictures got me excited about the house being one step closer to being done, Mm -hmm. but also the progress on things like that often suffers when little things get discovered or uh, life happens, shall we say. Yeah. (laughs) And, um, well, my husband and I both drive older cars because we think it's silly to have a car payment when... You can get by with an older car, especially if it gets decent gas mileage, and we've both been fortunate in that regard. But um, his car has been running poorly recently, and it decided that it was going to give him grief on the way to work the other day. So uh, it it had to be decided that he was going to stay in a motel that night because we both work in opposite directions, And there was no way I could take him to work and get to work myself without being on the road an hour and a half. Yes, and having to get up really, really early, I'm sure. Yes, so (laughs) um, (laughs) we we managed to get through that experience. But anytime something like that happens, it just makes you question, okay, how much longer am I going to be able to keep this car because – There's an expense here and, you know, is the the cost of this repair the same as it would be if I had a newer car and there was a car payment? And I keep getting shot down over the idea of having a newer car because neither of us have ever had one, although our financial situations have improved when when you get two people to move in together. Right, um, yes. But it, there's just a certain hesitation in if we get a newer car and we have a car payment, will we be able to get by as easily when we decide to bring home a new addition to our family? Um, being a Capricorn, I, I like it when I can write things out and I can get an expectation. <laughs> so 
surprises aren't always a good thing unless it's a nice surprise. But, yes. you know, having been through a few steps in life, I, I tend to try to shelter myself from the bad by expecting it. So, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> so That's I'm tell, probably I'm, a good idea. Yeah, I, I'm telling myself it, it may not necessarily be a good idea to get a newer vehicle because that car payment may equal the same as a repair. It could. It depends on, on how of a newer vehicle you're planning on getting and how much you have to put down on it. Right. I'm not, I, I don't realistically expect to ever own a off-the-factory car. I would say that I probably financially would be uh, fine with like you know a five year old car i my um my uh intake on the situation is that I will go to a place that has you know quote unquote certified used cars mm-hmm. and it will be from a, a dealer that sells that you know that make in new cars so wow. um my mother in law has had some good luck with that and you know, if I get the uh, make that's my sister's favorite, I'll have her blessing. <laughs> but um, but part of my week that was also a low point was that I recently lost my wedding ring. And Uh-oh. yeah, and you know, it, it's possibly it's you're losing weight, isn't it? <laughs> I'd like to think that you don't think that's it. Well, it could partly be it, but it didn't slip off my finger. I I have the bad habit of taking it off when I go to wash my hands and I leave it in my pocket because, well, I know how much I paid for the ring. It's, um, <laughs> you know, in the world of jewelry, there's a certain reality when it comes to men's that you know you're not going to pay as much as you would a lady's ring, unless you're, of course, Liberace. Or have well, yeah, I, no, I, I think there are also there. I, I think even with just kind of gold bands, you can go, you can get extravagant. But mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I understand that. And my ring had a, a certain design to it where it needed attention every year or two for it to maintain its quality. Uh-huh. And I was, I you know, that's one of the things that I learned from my parents because my sister my one sister betty got married at a young age and i remember hearing those conversations about how important it is to find a good jeweler and one that has you know financing and you know always get the um the maintenance plan you know so you could because my i remember my folks taking their jewelry in regularly to get it cleaned and whatnot of course, they also were of the age where you had nice watches that you took in to get cleaned and repaired and whatnot. But, um, you know, I, I remembered that when I went shopping. And I even took my mother-in-law to be with me when I picked out the jewelry. And uh, I got a plan so that I could take it in to get clean. Well, it didn't occur to me that we were going to be moving in a couple of years after <laughs> <laughs> to the other side of the area, they that that jeweler has no stores near me. So if I want to go and have my ring served or serviced, I have to make a trip, and then I have to plan to go pick it up. Does uh, not have a similar kind of ring. We got matching rings, but Billy uh, can't wear his for his job because he works in retail, and oftentimes people in that industry get things caught. So working with hangers and whatnot, he's had a number of, of female coworkers that have told him about how they, they damaged their ring or they lost it or they hurt their hand, so he doesn't wear it at work. And so here I am, you know, uh, complaining that he doesn't wear his ring unless we are out on a date night, quote unquote. Yeah. And I'm the one who loses it. <laughs> well, and, he needs his ring at home, right? Yeah. So I can look at the identical twin to mine and have it mock me. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was one of those that's things. That's probably where, why he doesn't lose his. Right. Because he doesn't take it off. It, now, do you take it off for any particular, or, or do you just take it off because that's what your parents did, or uh, you? It's a wide ring, and you want to get your hands dry. I, well, I paid a little bit more than um, 
the kind of jewelry you would think would change your hand color. But I didn't pay so much that it was one of those, you know, uh, you need to uh, buy something that will cost you six months of your salary sort of thing. Because, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, it has tiny little diamonds in it just to to be uh, a little bit of a flare. But the uh, the ring is silver and it has a sort of a, a, a tray down the middle of it, like a stripe. And that stripe mm-hmm. is actually a, um, oh, it's like, it's not glaze. What do they call that? It's not really paint either, but it's a design that's baked on there. And mm-hmm. it seems to wear away more quickly if it comes into contact with water. I mean, it doesn't wash off, but it helps it along. Yeah. Okay. I, so, I, I, I got you. So I, I have taken to not wearing it when I wash my hands and I got back to my desk and um, on that particular day, we had been sent to lunch early because the city was painting the parking garage next door and management had had complaints that the paint fumes were coming in through the ventilation. So, yes, and it makes some people sick. Right. So they said, take an early lunch and you can take a long lunch. Don't come back until such a time. And I came back and I had my lunch with me because I went outside and I don't really want to eat outdoors. And I had everything in my hands. I got back to my desk, sat things down. And I went to reach into my pocket to get the ring out and put it on. And it was one of those moments where it happened in slow motion. It yeah. <laughs> came out of my pocket. I had it on the tip of my finger, starting to, you know, sort of thread it on. And something happened that I lost my hold on it. It slipped out of my hand. And I heard it um, ricochet, possibly, or just hit the front of my desk, you know, the metal drawer. Oh, so it wasn't like you may have accidentally left it in. It came out of your pocket and it was on the floor? Yes, but we comb that floor like people mining for mushrooms. And you talked to the custodial service several times? Yeah. So you know what'll happen in like a year or two when I get promoted or something, I'll probably find it taking my drawers out. Yeah, it's possible. (laughs) Which I started to do, but of course, um, you know, being the talented person that I am, I wasn't able to line my drawer back up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so now my boss has a request into maintenance to have somebody put my drawer back together. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, that was And your the boss was not very happy about that, right? Uh actually she she's not really in a position of caring right now. We uh oh. <laughs> we're we're sort of unattended children in my office at the candy shop because uh <laughs> they have an office across town with new people and mm-hmm. they're still working on well, they're they're they are officially trained, but they're not experienced, and they seem rather needy for the time being. Yes. Well, sometimes that happens. Yes. Some people that have had experience in other, it, at other uh, stores or, or 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 businesses, don't seem to be as needy when they first start. Hmm. So, but uh, yeah, that was the little point of my week. And, and ironically, that would this would have to happen as we lead into a weekend where I'm going to a wedding. I'm going to my cousin's <laughs> wedding tomorrow, and I won't have my own ring to wear to her wedding. <laughs> of course that would happen on that weekend. You know, I, I'm going to have a bumper crop of rednecks, and I will possibly be the token gay couple that these people will have met, and yet I can't uh-huh. have my jewelry. Those were our weeks, and from here yes. we go into our topic of the week. I read a really fascinating article. Now, this was in a an app on my phone called Long Form, and I was looking at the front page where, you know, the staff uh, recommended, you know, they... I, that which makes you believe that they've read all of these articles in this. 
but I don't think that's true. But they had picked an article from Bloomberg Business News uh, by Robert Cloker. I wish these people would have names like Smith or something. <laughs> and the title of the article was The Smallest Ukulele, Scenes from a Class Conflict Playing Out Between Millionaires and Billionaires. And it was about this resort on the big island of Hawaii. Um, and I can't tell you what the name of the island is because I can't pronounce it, but it is spelled H-A-U-S-A-I-N. But it's this really, well, actually, it sounds like a fairly bleak island or a part of the island because it's all lava covered. But they have built it up. They have got all these pools and nice little recreation areas on this lava and they have a whole bunch of houses that are owned by what I believe these people would call the millionaires or, or what Robert Clo Cloaker would call the millionaires. And then there is this hotel resort area that is owned by God only knows who, but it is uh, used by the billionaires and they have gotten so it, it, the hotel has now gotten so popular that they need to restrict. Originally, the, these properties were sold to the uh, to the um, billionaires under the idea that they could use the resort hotels without a fee. They could just go in and make uh, reservations and and eat at the uh, at the restaurants and stuff and just pay the bill. They it wouldn't cost them a fee to to go there and uh, they could rent their, uh, when they weren't using the their homes, they could rent them out to people and the people that were renting could also just use that as uh, go to the restaurants and stuff without, a fee, or without paying an extra fee for it. Well, now the hotel's gotten real popular and the, the um, poolside areas and, and, uh, and the other amenities, including the restaurants and what have you, are getting too overbooked. And so now they put a whole bunch of restrictions on these people that own the houses and their visitors. And they're charging their visitors $250 a day to use these amenities, oh. which sounded a great deal to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't sound as much to these people. But it is... But it is a little out of the line of the people that own the houses and have the friends that rent the houses. They just think this is a little too much. And so they're fighting over this, and they think that the hotel is trying to to chase out or, or get the billionaires to or the millionaires to sell so they can buy the probably so they can buy the houses and then rent them out themselves. I don't know, but it's it, it seems to be a big thing. They're both suing one another. Uh, and, of course, as with all these kind of things, there's people on both sides of the issue that are from one one or the other. Uh, you know, some of the billionaires are on the sides of the people with that, are, that own the houses, and some of the millionaires that own the houses are on the side of the billionaires that are using the hotel. But it was quite amusing. I mean, it just... And in the middle of, of a campaign in which one of the uh, one of the candidates for president is or who's trying to be a candidate for president is arguing about the the top one percent. And we're talking about possibly the top one percent and then the top zero or zero point one percent or something. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very odd. But I found that really amusing. Yeah, I know that um, it's an ongoing issue in uh, vacation destinations like that, where there's a lot of um, local amenities, and the uh, the locals don't necessarily see the guests as helping the local economy. Yeah, and uh, I know that in the past I've heard about uh, with Hawaii. They have certain attractions that you know you get a uh, a local rate if you actually are a resident, and yeah. I think that um, I've heard that uh, people get up in arms about the discount. It's 
it's probably a weak comparison, but I know that um, there are those who, when they get to a certain age, they think that there should always be a discount. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, We do. (laughs) And, uh, you know, I think that that goes hand in hand with the residency, you know, in, in certain places, there are those who believe, you know, this is our beautiful place and you're the guest. You should be giving me a discount. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go on to my topic of the week. Mm-hmm. And um, as I'm wont to do, I uh, have found a little article of interest. It's sort of a news of the strange and unusual. Not so much X-Files it is. it is just oh my, how could that person be so gullible? (laughs) Um, I uh, discovered this article through FARC.com, F-A-R-K, like Kilo or Kite. The article is Flight Attendant Charged with Stealing Mini Liquor Bottles. So um, this story is uh, out of Memphis, Tennessee. The Associated Press reports, officials say a former Endeavor air flight attendant is charged with stealing nearly 1,500 mini bottles of liquor from her job and selling them online. The Shelby County District Attorney's Office said Friday that 28-year-old Rachel Trevor has been indicted on charges including theft, unlawful sale of alcohol, and unauthorized transportation of alcohol. Tennessee (laughs) Alcoholic Beverage Commission investigators say Trevor would put the small bottles of rum, vodka, gin, and whiskey in her bag after a flight, then post them for sale on Craigslist. (laughs) (laughs) Investigators say the cheap Bottles typically sell for eight dollars on flights, but Trevor sold them for a buck a piece. Endeavor Air is regional affiliate of Delta Airlines spokesman says Trevor's no longer with Endeavor Air. Gee, why not? <laughs> Online online records do not show if Trevor has a lawyer. Well, I guess that's how they got away with writing about it. <laughs> that story kind of reminded me of one of my first jobs when I was working in a call center. Um, I guess that could have been considered her occupational habit or hazard, rather, is... Uh, being a sticky fingers, you know, you're there and it's just available. One of my first call center jobs I had, of course, one of the things that you came right re- into regular contact with was uh, customer financial information. And <laughs> nowadays, you know, we have stricter measures because mm-hmm. things like this have happened. But the, uh, the, the, uh, I, I'm not sure if you want to, if I want to say urban legend, um, our trainer told us about a person who had written down the customer's information after a transaction. And this person started appearing at work in, shall we say, nicer clothes. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. And, you know, I'm not sure that they actually knew this person or if this was just something passed down as an urban legend. But, uh, you know, they said that this person started showing up in nicer clothes and it wasn't long before they made the connection because the uh, the customer disputed the charges. Ah. <laughs> I guess the irony is the worse the crime or the more severe the crime the more careful one has to be about their tracks. And so that was um, my topic of the week. Okay, so that brings us to our talk about town section. This is where we discuss listener feedback and our interactions with other shows. One of the things that we have been trying to do with our show is encourage our members to listen to other Pride 48 programs. And as I understand it, Sue, you recently listened to a show f- for the first time. I've listened to a few of Kvetchin Carmel's podcast. Um, she is, a- and it's kind of interesting. I would not, had I not been encouraged to to check it out, I probably wouldn't have checked it. Checked it out. It didn't seem like my kind of thing. But the uh, Carmel is a woman. Uh, some. I don't know, 10 years younger than I am or so. Uh, and she's had, um, she's had kind of a hard life in recently. Uh, and she's having some difficulties getting over that, but her show is sort of about her life and, and sharing the wisdom that she has learned over the years. And obviously all of those of us who have reached our, our, our mid forties and above 
think we have something to say to people that are younger than we are that might actually be worth listening to. Uh, She is into crafting. She is obviously sharing what wisdom she has about life and, and, um, and just generally what's going on in her life. She has some concerns about the working environment. She has some concerns about uh, being a divorced woman who was apparently married for a long time. And I feel for her. I think she's making some really bad decisions about some of the things she does in, in regards to, to ta- trying to deal with this. But, you know, we all make silly mistakes occasionally, and she's got as much right as any of us to make a mistake now. But she, it's really, it, after listening to it a little bit, I kind of got into it. It's like, well, yeah, I want to know how she's doing, and I... And I want to know what she's up to and how she's getting along in life and and what she's making this week and and those things. So I may keep listening to her. Um, Like I said, it was not something I would have thought I'd be drawn to. But but as uh, DJ said one day, she's a woman of a certain age and she has some some amount of wisdom to part to us and you just want to know what's happening with her and if she's really going to be okay and she's going to get over this divorce and and get on with her life yeah i listened to carmel also and i think that in one of the ways that i identify with her struggle is that i in a similar way found myself living across the country after i'd been through a bad breakup so as I listen to her, I, I kind of identify with that. I feel how she is having to start over and having to start a new chapter and how she's, you know, having to figure out how to do things again that she thought she didn't have to deal with again. So we thank you for listening to this episode. Our next recording, we're going to have a very special guest Sue and I have decided that we're going to watch a program together. It's one that's actually been off the air for quite a few years, but we both have a love of British comedy, and we're going to be talking to podcasting celebrity Matt Burlingame about the British comedy Waiting for God. So hopefully you'll check that episode out, and we'll have fun talking about one of our favorite shows. Out in the fall. Thank you for listening to The Far Away Nearby. You can visit our webpage at thefmpodcast.com, find our fan page on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at TFNDJ, and visit our companion blog on Tumblr. Our show is available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Send us an email at tfnpodcast at gmail.com. Or call and leave a message at 720-230-6919. This show is part of the Pride 48 Network. Find more shows over at pride48.com.